and I think I look forward to making sure that the Senate Democrats regain control of the Senate. I've always been a Democrat and will continue to be a Democrat, and I hope to continue voting for people who are the best candidates. And if the Senate Minority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, Malcolm Smith, understood that the mayor was the best candidate, then I would assume that that was the right thing. So you won't vote for Joe Bernard for later? No. And you, you promise that today? I don't promise anything. I never promise. Uh -huh. The only time that I think I ever promised was to, you know, when we got married. <laughs> uh, that was it. But I, I don't think I've ever promised anything ever, bef ever before or after. But you're not getting assistance from the Senate Republicans in this? No. No. I haven't spoken to any of them. They haven't spoken to me. And I, I look forward to being up there and being able to be part of the Senate Democratic majority. Who do you... Oh, Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, like, like, what's the case um, against Kevin Parker? Like, why should he not continue to serve? The case against Kevin Parker is, is brought by the people he's supposed to be representing. He's had s three terms to be able to provide services to the community to improve safety. The crime statistics in the 21st district are very, very poor. The serve social services in the district are poor. Parks conditions are poor, education issues, uh, you know, there are a lot of complaints and I would look forward to bringing the same things that I've advocated for in the council Manic district to bring it to the senatorial district. And, and can you like, explain the math of like how many votes do you think you would need to win, where you think they would come from? Well, well right now, uh, right now it seems to be a three-way race and I need every vote in that district to win. Uh, in terms of the math, uh, uh, the, the numbers la on the last three-way race was where I think about, about, I don't remember offhand, approximately about 18,000 or close, maybe less. And it was split between three people, you know, almost evenly besides a few hundred votes. And, and, and just lastly, do you think there, there, there's an issue of like splitting a majority of the votes and you getting in with some kind of like minority of votes similar to what happened in the Brooklyn 11th congressional race where there was one white candidate versus like three or four black candidates and there was the fear that the multitude of black candidates would like split the majority of the votes. Do you think uh, that's a, an uh, any Anything, anybody can make any analysis they want mm -hmm. but any, I would say at the same time I live in this district and I look forward to representing everybody in the district uh, and making sure that everybody feels that they're getting the service that they deserve. I, I, when I got elected to the city council the first time around, uh, my predecessor in certain parts of the community, uh, you know, they said that they had never got serviced. And you can go into Bensonhurst today, that's primarily Italian, Asian, and otherwise, and I have a very good reputation as providing the services that they deserve. So anybody can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, they will get their money's worth with me as their representative. Is and Bloomberg backing you? Yes. You've talked to him and he's yes. actually backing you? Yes. Right, is he gonna help you financially? Yes, he How has much? before, but he will, he will do so even more. But what's he gonna do? He's gonna raise money for you? Yes. But how much is he gonna raise money? I can't tell you that. Did you, and also, is Dove going to back you? Yes. You're sure about that? Cause he Positive. Because he said he's going to carry Kevin's petitions, I thought. You have to a ask him. You will have to ask him. But uh, Dove and I have worked for many, many years. And uh, unless he's interested in hurting Kevin by making sure that people in his neighborhood uh, are upset for some reason, I don't, I don't see it. And Vito? I think Vito has made a commitment to Kendall Stewart, and he's someone who keeps his word, and he intends to support him. And you're okay with that? Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with anybody keeping their promises. Uh, the only thing that I, that I would ask is that the, the voters in this district, uh, that the voters in the 21st district wake up and smell the coffee, and that they know, they know that they're not getting what they deserve and that they 
can do a lot better in the Senate with someone who will advocate aggressively on their behalf. With the, with the Senate Democrats on the verge of taking over the majority, wouldn't the issue of bringing resources be easier for who, whoever is, is in that seat? Or, or maybe in other words to ask it is, is it fair to make the claim that he hasn't brought in resources? Could that be attributed to the fact that he was in the minority? Uh, that's a good question. I would just say that if, if the current, uh, uh, current senator had a good reputation on any front in the community, then you could make that argument. If, let's say, the current senator had a great reputation for constituent services, for being, uh, uh, for being out at events that are in the community when issues come up, and I came and I made that argument, you could say, hey, Simka, you know, that's very easy for you to say. I, I would say that's not the case. So uh, it, since that's not the case with the things that he could do at this point, it's irrelevant whether he could get money or not get money. He's just not capable of advocating on behalf of his constituents. Do you think he has a 